Chapter 8. The Twist About a week later, Janie came out of the front gate and turned up the lane, the lead in her right hand, her dog walking steadily at heel with his long strides, his great head not far below her shoulder. From the buckle of his collar hung a new round metal disc that said, above the telephone number, Henry. They walked up the village until they came to Mrs. Garrow's wall with the red post box set into it. And Janie opened the garden gate and went in. Inside the porch of the cottage were Mrs. Garrow's wellies and leaning in the corner the long broomstick that she used for sweeping up leaves. Her cat sat on the mat. My old black cat doesn't like dogs, Mrs. Garrow had said. But to Janie's surprise, it stood up and began to rub itself against one of Henry's long legs, purring loudly. Henry looked embarrassed. Janie knocked on the front door, and after a moment, Mrs. Garrow opened it, smiling her crinkly smile. Hello, Janie said. This is Henry. I know that, dear, said Mrs. Garrow. You showed him to me before lots of times. Don't you remember? She patted the dog. Who's a good boy then, she said. He's looking ever so well, Janie. You must be proud of him. I am, Janie said. Do you see? He's got a butterfly nose and a wall eye. There's only one thing meant to be wrong with him, though I don't think it matters a bit, and that's the twist in his tail. It was all in the tea leaves, Mrs Garrow said. I don't understand, Janie said. How can you how can you know these things? Mrs. Garrow let out her usual volley of quacks. <laughs> Aha, Janie, my dear, she said. That's the twist in the tale. The end.